everyone, welcome to our second lesson on nuclear chemistry. Today we are going to be looking in a bit more detail at nuclear equations. So our learning intention for today is to demonstrate the use of nuclear equations to show radioactive decay and hopefully by the end of the lesson you will be able to use nuclear equations to represent radioactive decay yourself. So when radioactive decay occurs, changes take place inside the nuclei. The type of change depends on the radiation that is emitted. As gamma radiation is a wave and not a particle, gamma decay has no effect on the nature of the nucleus. The nature of the nucleus only changes when alpha or beta particles are emitted from nuclei. So we are going to start with the loss of the alpha particle. Now an alpha particle is 4,2 helium. It is the equivalent to losing a helium nucleus. The loss of an alpha particle is the same as losing two protons, so your atomic number decreases by two, and losing two neutrons. So overall, your mass number will decrease by four. So here we have an example of alpha decay. On our left hand side we have the thorium atom. It has an atomic number of 90 and a mass number of 232. Now it undergoes alpha decay, so the loss of an alpha particle, to produce radium. Now when we undergo alpha decay our mass number decreases by 4. 232 take away 4 is 228 and our atomic number will decrease by 2, 90, 88. Now on our left hand side we have a total mass number of 232 and in all nuclear equations the mass number on the left will be equal to the total mass on the right. So if we double check that 228 plus 4 will give us 232. We do the same for our atomic number. If it's 90 on the left, the total on the right must also be 90. 88 plus 2 gives us 90. So here is an example. What happens to radon when it undergoes radioactive decay? So, the mass number is going to decrease by 4. So, the new mass number for this unknown is going to be 216. Our atomic number down the bottom is going to decrease by 2 to 84. So that is the first step in completing this example. The next step is to identify which element fits in here. How do we do that? Well, we go to our data book and we find the element whose atomic number is 84. In this case, if we look at our data booklet, element number 84 is polonium. So when radon undergoes alpha decay, it forms polonium. So let's tackle some more examples. First off, we have uranium undergoing alpha decay. So here is what happens. Remember that we have to lose a mass of 4. So Our mass number will go from 234 to 230. Our atomic number has got to decrease by 2, so it goes from 92 to 90. And then we consult our data booklet, which tells us that our element is thorium. Our next example, we have polonium undergoing alpha decay. So again, 
we've got to decrease our mass number by 4. So we go from 216 to 212. And our atomic number's got to decrease by 2. So it goes from 84 to 82. If we were to consult our data booklet, the element with the atomic number 82 happened to be lead. Now this final example requires us to work backwards. So we know that our mystery element had undergone alpha decay to form radium. So if I have radium with a mass number of 226 on the right hand side plus our helium or alpha particle with a mass of 4 it means our original atom on the left had a total mass of 230. Its atomic number would have been 88 plus 2 which is 90 And if we consult our data booklet, the element with the atomic number 90, as seen above, is thorium. Now, when you are doing these, always, always check that your mass numbers and atomic numbers add up on each side. So that takes us then to the loss of a beta particle. Now, a beta particle is an electron. It's the equivalent to gaining a proton. So your in atomic number increases by one. There's no change in mass or mass number, only in your atomic. So the example that we're given here is that radium is undergoing a beta decay to form actinium. There is no change to the mass number, so 228 remains the same. However, there is an increase by 1 in the atomic number. So our atomic number goes from 88 to 89. Now the presence of this minus 1 means that even though we are going up one atomic number, when these two numbers are added together, it still gives 88. So here is another example for us to work through. So polonium is undergoing beta decay. Which atom will it produce? Well, first of all, we know that there will be no change to the mass number. So it stays as 216. What does change is the atomic number. It goes up by 1. If we use the atomic number to consult the data book, we can see that Element number 85 is astatine. So when polonium undergoes radioactive decay, it produces astatine when losing a beta particle. So what we're going to do now is we are going to have a quick try of writing equations for alpha and beta decay ourselves. So what I want you to do is I would like you now to pause the video here, fresh page in your jotter, fresh piece of paper and attempt to write out the equations for each of these examples. When you are done come back I'll run through it here for you. Alright then, let's make a start. So our first example, we have uranium. Now, it is going to undergo alpha decay to produce an alpha particle and something unidentified as of yet. So remember, if we have 234 as our mass number on the left-hand side of our equation, the mass numbers of both our alpha particle and our new atom must add up to 234. 
that means that we are missing a mass of 230. Our mass numbers also have to be the same collectively on the right as they were on the left. In order to go from 2 to 92, we must have an atomic number of 90. And you might remember from our last slide that the atom with the atomic number 90 is thorium. In our second example, we have polonium undergoing alpha decay, so it loses that alpha particle. 216, take away 4, is 212. 84 minus 2 is 82. And the element with the atomic number 82 is lit. Lastly, thorium undergoes radioactive decay. It will produce an alpha particle and it will produce an atom with a mass number of 226 and a atomic number of 88. Which means that the new atom formed is radium. Now on to the beta decay. So we start with a lead. Now it undergoes beta decay. It will produce an electron and an atom with the mass 214. Remember our mass remains unchanged during beta decay. And our atomic number increases by 1. So the atomic number will be 83. That means that we have produced the atom bismuth. In example 2, we have actinium, which is a mass of 228 and an atomic number of 89. Undergoing beta decay, it will produce this electron. Its mass number will remain as 228 and its atomic number will increase by 1 to 90, meaning we have produced the thorium atom. In our last example, we have bismuth with an atomic number of 83 and a mass number of 210. It undergoes beta decay it loses this electron and forms an element with a mass number of 210 and an atomic number of 84. Remember, 84 minus 1 is 83. In this case, we have produced the atom polonium. In case you were having any issues with my handwriting, here are the answers for the last three examples on screen now. And just to kind of tie this stuff up, I just wanted to say that the daughter nuclei, so the new nuclei produced during radioactive decay, they themselves tend to be radioactive as well. So what happens is that the decay continues until they reach a stable isotope and usually that stable isotope is lead. Radioactive decay is usually not just the loss of one single particle. It usually requires the emission of a number of particles in order to reach a stable isotope. So that takes us to the end of this rather short lesson today. 
Now the aim was for me to show you guys how to use nuclear equations to show radioactive decay. Now I hope that through this lesson you are now able to make a start at doing so yourself. So what I would like you to do is to make sure that at the end of this lesson you have your pupil booklet complete up to page 31 and that if you go to your CGP workbook you can now complete page 68. So just once more I would like you to make sure that your notes are complete up to page 31 and complete page 68 of your practice workbooks. Thank you all for tuning in today. As usual, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch, pop a message on Teams, send me an email, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I hope you're having a good day and you enjoy the rest of your week.